Hello, I am Michael Vascusi, and this is our small video presentation on Japanese theater posters in the 1960s. 1960 was an intense and transformative time in Japan. Just 20 years earlier, Japan had taken a huge economic loss after its defeat in World War II. The Japanese government shifted its old emphasis on military prowess and prioritized economic development and the Ishida Doctrine, designed by Prime Minister Yohia Daegru. Japan delegated responsibility for its national defense to the United States. This meant that the U.S. had a military presence on Japanese soil, which gave Japan what is called a subordinate independence, while at the same time giving it more economic freedom. Artists found many ways to respond to these circumstances. Prior to the 1960s, theater in Japan had begun to animate European theater. This kind of realistic theater was called the Shingeki. With an American military presence in Japan, a new underground theater movement emerged that began to reassert indigenous theater culture. Instead of using traditional stages, this movement used the street, tents, and coffee shops as stages. One of the most influential designers at the time was Tandanori Yoku. He was born in 1936 in the Hoigo province and was the most influential artist in this movement due to his ability to use pre-modern imagination to transcend the modern. Unable to afford a college education, he became a commercial grade graphic designer and attempted to eliminate the traditional Japanese style from his work. However, once he joined the Japan Design Center in Tokyo and became more politically aware, he awakened to the westernization of Japan and began trying to counter this phenomenon by including Japanese imagery in his art, such as flags, family crests, kimonos, national flowers, and more. He juxtaposed this imagery to western symbols and advertisements. Yoku utilized symbols throughout his career. By doing so, he explored the way emotions are interlocked with symbols. He often juxtaposed Japanese and American symbolism. Two of the symbols utilized by Yuku the most were the Great Wave and the Rising Sun. This poster here, titled The Crescent Moon, has virtually no Western influence found inside of it. It shows a gradient black background printed over a samurai battle scene. The top layer exhibits Hokiyasu's Great Wave. Calligraphy on the top corner explains some of the play at the, at the top of the poster. Gunshots appear to have been fired into it. Yuku's other piece, The Loincloth Hermit, created this poster in 1966 for an underground theater group open to those 18 and older. The people in the college are actors from the production. Yoku uses the image of a rising sun in the background and once again frames the composition with a Hokuyasu-inspired wave. These are two trademark elements of Yoku. The poster is busy with color and symbolism. The peach, for example, symbolizes an idealized past. The poster in a whole using a sound composition to meld together items in a collage that is theoretically should not go together. One of Yoku's most influential posters was made for Jun Okara's 1967 play, John Silver, Love and Shinjuku. Traditional Japanese playing cards border the poster and focus on the woman who appears to be in the nude with her hands tied behind her back. This poster is a good representation of how women were misogynistically portrayed in these posters. In the top corner, there is a note apologizing for the lateness of the poster, which was printed the morning of the play. The poster was made using silkscreen and e-woodblock printing. Another influential figure at the time was Koga Hirano. Koga Hirano was the poster designer for the Black Tent Theater Company, an underground company that he thought of as the theater of outside theaters. The actors in this company would perform in a big tent that they transported to perform around the country. The company focused on anti-war, anti-capitalist, and anti-conformism theater. Unlike Tandanori, Hirano did not adhere to a certain style in his work, but consistently designed with multiple transparent layers of color and solid type. While Hirano was influenced by Western art, he did not seek to westernize his own art and stayed true to Japanese symbolism, style, and practices. Hirano was well known for his letter forms. He explained the descriptive and symbolic impact of the Japanese letter form and how one can experience a movement of bliss in which shape and meaning coincided and revealed themselves simultaneously. He said that he wants his audience to receive his lettering with all five senses. During the 1960s, there was an emphasis on sexual liberation in Japan. Many of the most prominent avant-garde artists used the female body in their pieces as an expression of the liberation. Menon were the people creating these posters, and they represented women in demeaning ways. Vera Mackey, the author of The Spectacle of Women in Japan, underground theater posters, categorized the way that women are portrayed in the three terms, the forbidden and the fetishized woman, the grotesque woman, and the decorative woman. The decorative woman exists 
in relation to the non-decorative men. Women are often portrayed in these posters as objects, while men are portrayed as protagonists, creatives, etc. For example, in Yoku Tandanori's piece for Kara Juno, a conventionally attractive naked woman is standing in an acrobatic-like pose while a man's face is shown and appears to be samurai-like. The Grotesque Woman The underground movement had an emphasis and fascination on object bodies. In one of Tandanori's pieces, The Crime of Fatsu Oyama, he creates a cartoon of a woman who is not conventionally attractive, with the attributes such as armpit hair and milk spurting from her breasts. The representation of gender ambiguity also falls under the idea of the grotesque woman. Gender ambiguity is exhibited on Uno Araka's poster for Tenerima Shunji's 1969 play La Marare Vrijan. The forbidden and the fetishized has to do with the possibility of seeing the female genitals which were forbidden. In the play Little Match Girl, a box of matches is meant to look like pubic hair between the legs, allowing men a glimpse at this forbidden sight, along with other posters portraying the similar theme. With the emergence of the new left movement triggered by the Yoshida Doctrine, a new feminist movement called Ribu emerged. The Ribu movement created a swift from moderate to radical feminism. Women of the Ribu movement criticized the more mainstream politics as tied to ideologies of masculinity and held the goal of bringing about revolution in female subjectivity in Japan. Ribu feminists wanted completely equality. Another characteristic of the Ribu movement was organized gatherings of women and girls in summer camps where they could relate to their experiences. To take it a step further, there were communities where women lived together to protest and get away from the patriarchal concept of the housewife. Through praxis of communes as alternative model to the state-sanctioned family system, women of Ribu lived their anticipated sexual liberation on a daily basis, defying the heteronormative male-headed family. The women at this time were taking radical strides towards equality, yet it seems that women were still so left out of many aspects of society, including the Japanese theater poster design. To represent the elements and design history of the Japanese theater posters, we have created commemorable versions of theater tickets. These tickets were and still are handed out to attendees to various performances around the world. While these tickets can be kept for memorable purposes, the ones created here serve to commemorate various artists through the Japanese poster community. Along those are Tanori Yoku and Hirano Koga, showcasing some of their more famous pieces of work.